Phase log loops or PLLs for analog signals are ubiquitous in today's physics and engineering applications. Frequency tracking, resonance driving, and oscillator control are some examples. Are you curious to know how PLL for analog signal work? Hi, I'm Anna, and in this video we talk about PLL working principles, how to set PLL up, and what different application use cases they are. Let's start. The PLL keeps the phase difference between a reference signal and fallover oscillator at the fixed set point by adjusting the frequency of the oscillator based on the phase difference between two signals. It consists of three main components. The first element is a phase detector to measure the phase difference between two periodic signals. The second one is a PID controller or a loop filter, and this translates the phase difference into a feedback signal. And finally, the third component is a controlled oscillator whose frequency can be modified by feedback signal. To lock the phase between input and output signal, we need to close the feedback loop by applying the output signal to one of the inputs of phase detector. If properly adjusted, the phase difference between the input and output signals remain constant in time, and therefore they run with the same frequency. Now let's focus on these components one by one. Depending on the signals and use cases, different approaches can be used to measure the phase difference between two periodic signals. When using analog signals, a dual phase demodulator, which is the core of the locking amplifier, can take a reference signal and an input signal and derive the two quadrature component X and Y. From those, the amplitude and the relative phase can be obtained. The measured phase covers all four quadrants of the whole circle from minus 180 to plus 180 degree. The next step after measuring the signal phase is to transform it to a feedback signal. First, the phase is subtracted from the target set point to generate an error signal. Then the error signal is passed through proportional, integral, and derivative operation to adjust the feedback dynamic according to the application requirements. After adding an offset and limiting the signal range, the final feedback signal is ready for the third component, that is the controlled oscillator. In order for PLL to work properly and efficiently, it is crucial to use the right P, I and D parameters. Finding the optimal parameters is complex, but no worries. We will introduce you later to our PID advisor, which helps you design an effective PLL. The last building block of a PLL system is an oscillator with the capability to control its frequency either numerically, NCO, or by analog voltage, VCO. This is the basic PLL functionality scheme. In addition to the three main essential blocks, a PLL can include extra functionalities to address some specific requirements. For instance, if you need to stabilize an optical interferometer over multiple wavelengths, a digitally implemented PLL can easily unwrap the measured phase so that it can build up beyond the usual minus 180 to plus 180 degrees before applying it to the PID controller. In some applications, like atomic force microscopy or AFM, the measurement results are in the error and feedback signals. A PLL can also provide access to these signals. To generate harmonics of the signal, which is required in some applications such as parametric feedback cooling, the PLL can simply use frequency multipliers in the forward path for integer harmonics and in the backward path for fractional harmonics. The main functionality of a phase log loop is the time-based synchronization of two systems, mainly represented by two oscillators. There exist numerous applications when two or more oscillatory signals need to be synchronized. While PLL are extensively used in digital systems, here we're going to focus on application of PLL for analog signals. In particular, those belonging to one of the following three configurations. The frequency tracking, the resonance driving and oscillator control. As an example for frequency tracking, an FM radio uses a PLL to extract the audio signal from the radio signal received from the broadcasting radio station. The audio signal is proportional to the change in the carrier frequency and thus to the feedback signal. 
By applying the feedback signal to a speaker, one can enjoy their favorite FM station. Resonance tracking is essential in numerous applications such as scanning microscopy and MEMS inertial navigation systems. The PLL can guarantee that the device is always driven as its resonance frequency despite the change in its frequency due to the physical parameters such as temperature, force and so on. Controlling the time base of an external oscillator based on a high quality reference signal is a very common approach for frequency synthesis. A voltage-controlled oscillator, the VCO, can be replaced by more complex systems such as interference detection, which is used in optical PLLs for laser stabilization. As mentioned earlier, finding the right PLL settings can be very complex because there are many degrees of freedom. Let's dive into a practical example where we can see how to design the right PAV parameters based on the device response and application requirements. The first step is to characterize the frequency response of the resonator. To do so, lock and amplifier sweeps the excitation frequency and measures the amplitude and phase of the resonator's response at each frequency point. By fitting the measured curves into a Lorentzian response, we obtain the parameters needed for a proper PLL design. This includes the resonance frequency, the quality factor, and the phase response at the resonance. Within our software Lab1, Zurich Instrument offers a PID advisor which runs optimization algorithms to find the right PLL settings while taking into account the user requirement such as bandwidth, as well as the response of the device under test or DUD. As a next step in our example, we apply the characteristics of our resonator to the selected DUD model of a PID advisor and ask the advisor to design a PID controller that satisfies specific close loop bandwidth, in this case 1 kHz. Applying the obtained parameters for PID controller and low pass filter, we can ready to close the feedback loop. Let's switch on the PLL and see in the plotter tool how it stabilizes the fluctuating phase of the resonator and locks it into our desired set point. By controlling the frequency of the oscillator, the PLL locks the receive signal phase at the set point we obtained from the resonator response. By adjusting the phase set point, you can park the resonator at various driving points. I hope this introduction to phase lock loop was helpful to understand one of the widely used techniques in test and measurement applications. For more details, especially about noise handling in PLLs, please download the white paper on our website. We would be delighted to learn if your application needs PLL and would be happy to help you to set up your ideal measurement. Just call or email us. Thank you for watching.